Um, this morning we're going to talk a little bit about Ruth. I appreciate the, the scripture reading, the prayer. Um, a little bit about the, the text. Uh, the book of Ruth begins with the uh, the story of Elimelech. Um, Naomi and her sons are leaving Bethlehem and going to Moab uh, for food. While there, the sons marry, and Naomi gains two daughter-in-laws, uh, Ruth and Orpah. Uh, we don't know how old Ruth was, but we know the, the women married young in those days. So we're, we assume it was the early teenage years. Uh, within a period of about ten years uh, that they were there, Naomi loses her husband and her sons to death. Naomi learns that Israel has bread again and she returns to Bethlehem. Naomi entreats the daughter-in-laws to go back to their people. Ruth doesn't. Uh, Ruth was likely in her 20s when her husband died, and she made this decision to go uh, to be with Naomi. Uh, the book of Ruth, I think, beyond anything else, is a, is a love story. Um, I, I don't think there exemplifies a better actual story of love um, in the Bible outside of Jesus Christ coming to this earth and dying uh, for the sins of man. Um, it tells a young, young woman who gave up her, her, her life, um, her religion, her very people to be with her mother-in-law, uh, to care for someone else. In turn, she ended up being the one cared for. Um, coincidentally, or not coincidentally, the name Ruth means friendship. Um, so we see, in, again, the, the story of Ruth. I do want to say this. Um, the elders took away my meeting time for the team, so... If I could get a couple minutes from the teens after morning services, I would appreciate it before I forget. But I intend to do it this evening. I apologize for interrupting the lesson for that. Um, 15 through 18, as was just read. We see here Ruth dedicates herself to Naomi. Uh, and again, we've already talked about the story, how we've gone into a, a, a situation now. And again, we have to remember, she wasn't an, an Israelite. She, she didn't have the same gods. She used to worship uh, foreign gods. We know that Orpah went back to, to her gods, to her homeland, um, to do these things. Um, but Na Ruth makes a choice, um, and Ruth chooses to go with Naomi. And you have to keep in mind here, we're living in a time where women had no power. I mean, little to no power. Unless you were a queen or some station like that, women had very little power. Uh, Naomi had no power. She had no real way of actually getting an income or bringing in uh, money enough to support um, herself, much less herself and Ruth. So Ruth, again, is, is taking upon herself to try to help Naomi with the, that particular support. Um, she didn't seek personal gain. Um, Naomi doesn't have any more sons for her to marry, meaning that Naomi is likely way too old um, to be bearing children. Again, we don't know the exact age, uh, but she's too old to be bearing children in this particular uh, regard. Um, and as far as Ruth knew, she was going back to Israel to die a widow. Now, a lot of you may say, well, she decided not to get married. Big deal. Well, it is a big deal in this culture. It is a big deal in the time they were living because a woman's worth was determined by how many children she possessed, by how many children that she had. So she clearly wasn't thinking about herself. She wasn't thinking about the things that she wanted. Um, she was going to die a widow. Uh, she gave up her own personal comforts for this choice. Um, she abandoned the gods of her people. Um, Ruth chose to make Naomi's God her God. Now, the idea we have to look at is the love requires dedication. Um, when, two, when a man and woman are joined in marriage, we, we make the statement, um, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, um, sickness and in health, till death do us part signifying that we're in it for the long haul. We're going to be dedicated to the idea of this marriage bond, that we're going to be dedicated one to another. No matter how bad things get, we're not just going to pick up and leave each other just simply because times get tough or they get hard or they get difficult. Um, and Ruth exemplifies that idea of love, and that is number one, dedication. If we say we love someone and are yet not dedicated to that individual, then we cannot honestly say we love someone. Does our love show true dedication today? Do we recognize the choice that we have made uh, to follow God? Uh, again, we look at the idea of Ruth dedicated herself to, to Naomi. Um, she made a choice. She didn't seek personal gain. Uh, she gave her up her own personal comforts for this choice. Do we recognize the choice that we have made to follow God? 
Do we understand that when we decided to follow God, we dedicated our life to Him? And again, we can look at verses like Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, where Paul says that I, it's Christ living in me, that I'm dead. But we also go to like Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Jesus said, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. If we want to be true Christians, if we want to be truly pleasing to God, we have to be dedicated to Him. We have to be completely and totally on board with what He would have us do. Hebrews 10, 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Making a reference to falling back or going back out into the world. Um, did Orpah love Naomi? And, and I think she did to some degree. It was her mother-in-law and that time they essentially lived in the same house. They did the same things together. Um, so she had a type of love for her, but she was not completely dedicated to her. Do we follow God merely from the perspective of seeking personal gain? And again, I've heard people say, well, I want to be a Christian because I want to get all the things. I mean, is that our entire reason for following God? Is that all, all the reason we do what we do? 1 Timothy 6.55 says, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Now what do I mean? Well, I have known politicians. Um, we're not talking about Brett, I promise. Brett's a good guy. Um, but where we used to go to church when I was a young boy, um, there was a man, uh, we went to a congregation that was extremely large with a lot of wealthy individuals in the congregation um, in Pikeville, Kentucky. Well, there happened to be a politician and you notice right around election time, he started coming more and more frequently. Um, he would go around and shake hands and kiss babies in church. I mean, he would go around and talk to everybody. His whole purpose, it appeared, for being a member of the congregation, it appeared, was to get personal gain. Was that I'm there for, for, that, for that particular reason. Now, I can't say beyond a shadow of a doubt it was, but that's the way that it appeared. Um, and do we follow God merely from the perspective of seeking personal gain? Are we willing to give up personal comforts in order to do God's will? Because this is the hard one. Um, I know I, it's very difficult for me to give up personal comfort. Um, during Bible study, I started sweating. And, I, and here I am. I said, I want to know who turned off the air conditioner for the record. But here I am. I, I'm, I'm standing up here. It's like 70 degrees. And I'm sweating, coming off my head. And I'm, I'm whining about it, right? I like my personal comforts. I like the air conditioner. Um, I'd love to have been to live back in the, you know, the 1800s with the simplicity, but I couldn't have done it. Um, no air conditioning, refrigerator, it, it, just, it was a mess. Do we think that I can have everything I want, never have to give anything, and still be in a love relationship with God? David made the statement, someone gave, was going to offer him something. He said, let me give you this, so you can offer up to God on your behalf. David said, I will never offer up to my God that which costs me nothing. Is that what we're expecting out of religion? I have to give nothing, yet I get everything? Philippians 3, verse 7 through 8. Paul said, But what things were gained to me, those I counted for loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. What do you mean? Most likely, Paul was a rich man at one point in his life. Do we understand that? Paul... Um, worked very closely with the Sanhedrin court. Some say he was a member of the Sanhedrin. I don't know if he was or not. Um, but what I do know is that most likely Paul was a very wealthy individual. When he turned to Christianity, that wealth was lost. It was forfeit to the, to the nation of Israel, to the Jews that they were living at that particular time. But Ruth made a lasting choice um, that had real consequences. Um, she did those things that, that God would have us to do in our own lives as far as determination is concerned. But also, Ruth showed a devotion um, to Naomi that I, that I think is, is a, really it's a beautiful thing. Uh, Ruth chapter 2, verse 11 through 12, Boaz, um, you know, I, I need to get back to, back to our story for a minute. Um, so they go, they know there's, there's grain in Israel. So they go back and they find a man who is a kinsman to a, a fairly close degree. And Naomi gives Ruth the instructions on how to go approaching this man, um, trying to get him to, to wed her. Um, she does the things that Naomi says. And Boaz answered and said, It has been fully showed to me all that thou hast done to thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband, and thou hast, 
And how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity, and art come into people which knewest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward shall be given to thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. So Boaz is acknowledging everything that Ruth has done for Naomi. Now, again, would that be a difficult thing to do? Now, today I'll ask you ladies, um, some of you would, I know you would, some of us, however, would not, and gentlemen, if your spouse passed away, would you go live with your mother-in-law? Would you stay with them? So I said some of you would. I said some of you would. Most of us, however, would not. But here is a young lady who knows Naomi is going to be destitute. She knows she's not going to have a lot, and yet she does it anyway. And again, the hostile time for single women. Men often, men often took advantage of women in Ruth's situation. Um, and it would have been understandable if she didn't want to do the work and go back to work, but she went. Um, she went, she wanted to marry uh, Boaz, but she needed to work in order to feed Naomi. Um, she cared for help with Naomi in her, in, her, uh, in her age. She was even willing to marry a virtual stranger to accomplish this goal. Um, but how about, are we determined to have the same type of devotion to God that she had to, to Naomi? And again, this is a, a merely human relationship. This isn't anything spiritually based. This is a, a love between a, a daughter and a mother. It should go less than what, than what we should be doing. Do we understand the value of labor for those we love? Do we understand how valuable it is um, to labor for those that we love? Do we understand what it is that God expects from us? Are we determined to, to, to go when the Lord tells us to go? Or where the Lord wants us to go? We look at verses like Mark 16, 15, and 16, ones that we all know well. When, when Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Or Luke chapter 14, verse 12, when he says, go out to the highways and byways and bring them in. Are we willing to do those things when God wants us to do it? Um, do we work when the Lord tells us to work? Um, and I realize he doesn't come into our minds and our, our thought process and says, all right, here's what I want you to do. But we can find in the scriptures what he wants us to do. Um, John, chapter 9, verse, uh, John chapter 9, verse 4, John says, work. For the night is coming when no man can work. And of course, Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, he says, let us do good as we have opportunity. Um, we, we should do the, the good works. We ought to do those things that God would have us to do. Um, and again, I'll go back to this. Is there anything that can stop us from doing God's will today? And that's what it means to be devoted to something and to someone. Is that we're willing to do whatever it takes to be with them. We're going to do whatever it takes um, to have that relationship. Um, nothing external should ever be able to stop us uh, from doing the will of God. Um, was it Romans 8, 31? If God be for us, who can be against us? I think is the, um, the verse there. Um, we're the only ones who can stop us. Um, as one said, I have seen the enemy, and the enemy is us. We're the only ones that can separate ourselves from God. Ruth was the only one that could separate herself from Naomi. She wasn't going to let go. Nobody else could do it, no matter the situation wasn't going to do it. But her love showed true determination, true devotion. Um, she was doing the things that God would have her to do. Um, she wanted to live the life with Ruth um, that, that she could live. Um, do we understand our need to care for the hopeless? Our responsibility to, to be there for the people that are in need. James 1.27. Um, as Dave mentioned, I believe it was Wednesday. Um, and, but pure and undefiled religion before our God and Father is this, right? To sit in the church pew on Sunday morning, to sing praises to God. It's not what it says, is it? It says pure and undefiled religion is this. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their afflictions and to keep oneself unspotted by the world. That's religion. That's what religious means. It doesn't mean we happen to assemble when the church assembles. Now, is that part of religion? Well, sure. Is that part of our responsibility? Sure. But it's not the mark of a religious individual. Anybody can sit in a pew. 
Anybody can sit there and put a few dollars in a collection plate when it passes, eat a cracker and drink some juice. But if we're not truly devoted to God, those acts of communion with God and the offering means nothing if we're not truly devoted to God. If we don't do the things that God would have us to do. Would we, would we be willing to sacrifice our life for another? Um, and again, I, I made the statement, uh, and I don't remember where we were or what we were doing, um, but it's this idea that how many, I mean, I don't want to raise your hands, I want you to think, how many of y'all would die for God? I mean, just think in your minds. How many of y'all would die for God? Somebody walks in with a machine gun and says, you don't denounce God right now, I'm going to kill you. How many of y'all be willing to die for God? Some of us would. It's easy to say I would until it actually happens. But I tell you, the hard part's not dying for God. That's not the difficult part. The difficult part is living for it. That's the difficult part. How many of us were willing to sacrifice our life, not to death, but to give up the things that we want for the things of God? Matthew 16, Jesus, of course. If any, any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Right? We'll take up our cross and follow, but I really don't want to deny myself, God. I don't like to, die, to deny myself any pleasures of this life. I want to partake in all the pleasures I want to partake in. I'll do some of the things you want me to do. I'll give you some of the stuff you want me to give you, but don't ask me to give up some things that I want. Um, for what is a man profited, verse 26, if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Determination. Ruth determined to go with Naomi. She determined, I'm going to go. Even though she had to give up everything, even though she had to, to give up everything she was going to get, even though she had to give up a future husband and children, she was going to go. She was going to work for Naomi. Um, go into the fields, gather up the, the, um, the crops. She even went so far as to marry someone. She had no idea who they were. Um, Ruth 3, 5, she said to her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. That's what Naomi had asked of her. Nothing could stop her from these tasks. Ruth's love showed true dedication, true devotion, and true determination. If we really say that we love God, it cannot only be an emotional feeling or a, a thought process in our minds. Here's how Jesus phrased it. Here's how Jesus put it. John 14, 15. Jesus said, if you love me, what did he say? Keep my commandments. Right? He didn't say, if you love me, then you have this feeling deep inside of you. If you love me, then you get to do anything you want to do. He said, if you love me, you'll do what I tell you to do. That's how we show our love for God. We're dedicated to the cause of Christ. We're dedicated to preaching and teaching His Word just like Christ was. We're devoted completely and totally. Our entire being is devoted to God. That where He sends us, we will go. And we're determined to stay the course. No matter how difficult it gets, no matter the things that we may have to do and the things that we may have to give up. That's true love. That's true devotion. That's true determination in the eyes of God. And the question this morning I'll leave you with is, do you love God? Jesus said again, if you love me, keep my commandments. As far as salvation is concerned, God's plan is simple. And it's relatively easy. He said, if you would hear the words that I have spoken, if you would believe the words that are written in the pages of the book, if you believe that God exists, if you believe that God will reward those that diligently seek after Him, then repent of your sins, confess that you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and then be baptized for the forgiveness of those sins. But just like Ruth determined to stay faithful to Naomi, we have to determine to still can continue to do the things of God, to stay faithful to Him in all our ways, in all our lives. And if we have fallen short in any way or we need to come to God, please come.